we should understand something called demographic dividend. My dear children, I am very happy to share with you that as a country, India is sitting on a great advantage today. The economists globally, they call it demographic dividend. Demographics are basically in a society you have senior citizens, people who are going to the factories and offices, working and coming, that is the second layer and the third layer are children who are going to schools and colleges studying. So if you take these three layers, economists again will call the middle layer who are going to the factories and working and earning money as producers of goods. The bottom layer children, they don't produce goods, they go to school, get studied. And the top layer, the senior citizens, they also don't produce because they spent 40-50 years in producing, now they are on the retirement. So now the bottom layer and the top layer are called consumers. They consume food. If they are serious citizen, they may consume some medicines, etc. So there is a mid layer of producers and three, two other layers of consumers. So therefore, economists say one third of the people in any economy in any country produce and the remaining two third they consume, they eat. Very grossly putting. So typically it is one third, one third, one third ratio all over the world. But it so happened demographically, India and China are sitting on a separate bench. By 2030, by 2030, 50 percent of the population of India and 50 percent of the population of China is going to be in the mid layer of producers. That means suddenly there is going to be a quantum jump of 17 percent of the total population now becoming producers. That means the GDP of, the, of these two countries, India and China, is going to grow substantially by 17% by 2030. The huge economic spurge that is likely to make both India and China economic superpowers of the world in, by 2030. That is provided all of us give skill developments, employable skills to this youth. If you give employable skills, they will get employment, they will earn, they will bring rupee or dollar to home, spend on their children's education, on their clothing, on their nutritious food, etc. The society will look very, very healthy. What if we don't give the skills to this 17% extra producing population, they don't have any employable skills, they can't get employment, but their aspirations are the same. They also want to have nice clothes, nice food, nice TV at home, want to send children to a good school. So where is that money going to come? Who is going to give that money to them? But they want it. They deserve it as a citizen. So they will take to crime. So what happens if the 17% or 20% of the people take crime in the country? It is going to be chaotic. So we have a choice. We have a choice of becoming global, global economic power by giving skills to all these people or we have a choice to become a criminalized society. The choice is with us. So we need to exercise that choice right now. And we have to think very deeply as a country. Let us not blame X agency or Y agency. It is very easy to blame government. But Blaming government and closing the book and going off, washing our hands does not help anywhere. We need to put pressure on the government. We need to put pressure on the government that youth, our youth are very brilliant people. When US economy can thrive on the Indian youth in the IT, why can't India thrive? So our children are be beautiful, they are brilliant. Let us give them growth skills. Let us march forward to become a, a global economic superpower. Finally, finally, my last word in human trafficking, as I was telling you, prevention is better than cure. Everybody, so why should we allow our women, our children to be trafficked? 
we should stop it. We should prevent it. And if you look at the numbers, numbers are in lakhs. I don't know, I mean, whether anybody brought to your notice. They are very, very horrifying pictures. And the numbers are so huge. They run into lakhs of women, lakhs of children being trafficked. So why should we allow all that to happen? And after it happens, then we talk about rescue, rehabilitation, reintegration. That's all absurd to me. And all of us were brought up. Every teacher told every other student in the class, when you want to give a, a speech or a participate in an elocution or debate, the standard most accepted, everybody wants to say this, is prevention is better than cure. All of you want to say this in all your forum. So the prevention is better than cure applies everywhere. Even on such a huge subject like human trafficking, prevention is better than cure. Thank you very much for giving me all this time. Thank you.